Howdy! This is your CNC Dude Ed at Sarasota Suncoast Technical College and I'm going to talk about the NIMS Level 1 CNC Milling Project. This is like should be the, the final thing you do in the manual G-code area. And maybe you might end up working at a shop that they're programming this way. Or you're learning how to uh, the nuts and bolts of G-code. So if you're uh, in a shop with the CAD CAM facility, you know how to edit the code and you know how, to, well, how it all works. All right. So here's our print, right? This is the NIMS milling standard. You read this thing. This is the inspection sheet. <clears throat> you should inspect your own part before you give it to somebody else. You know, you don't want to end up at a shop and you don't want to give first piece inspection and the thing's no good. So, all right. So here's your print here, and you're gonna look over this. And uh, in my class, I, I give a helper sheet. Some some might be like, "Hey, you're on your own. You just gotta figure this out. I don't know what tools you're gonna use, what material, what your process." But my intention is mine is to make a complete part. And we're going to use the carrier method, which means you're going to hold on to the bottom, which means you need oversized material. This is 725 thick, so standard aluminum. We're going to make this out of aluminum. This is aluminum and mild steel. We're going to aluminum. And it says material 0.75 by 2.5 by 3.5. We're not going to do it that way. Uh, we want to make this thing complete. So we're going to go one inch tall. And it says 2.5. So I think I think I've seen a lot of skills parts were like this, which where some of it was like pre-machined. And um, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. I, I want to make the complete part. So we're going to use one inch tall stock it says two and a half inch wide i'll probably go to two and three quarter inch material wide and we're going to cut it off a little bit oversized like three and five eighths or three and three quarter that's how we're going to do it out of school and what i recommend i want to i want to see somebody else do a complete part because as an because it's you're not going to be able to hold these tolerances with something that's sort of pre-machined. You want to be able to do it all. So if you're machining the top, you're doing everything except the bottom. You're doing five sides, and the sixth side is the only thing remaining. All right, so you're going to write your program. We're going to face mill. We're going to contour. We're going to do a bunch of drilled holes. There are some tight tolerances on this print. Uh, some of the holes are plus or minus two. The basic uh, dimensions here are the three place dimensions of plus or minus three. Of course, some of these are plus or minus two, but I don't even, I don't think of like making those sloppy. But So the overall height's got to be plus or minus three. And pretty much everything else has to be plus or minus three. And some of the holes are plus or minus two. So drilling might be a challenge. Drilling and reaming, maybe, or I like pre drilling and then drilling, and that seems to work pretty good. Okay. How are we going to do this, right? I got a uh, master camp set up here, and I'm going to finish doing that at some point, and I'm putting a vise in there. So I also have a fusion part. There's a part right there, colored it blue. Let's look at the isometric view right there. Pretty. But I wanted to do a better demonstration. So I put the stock. This is going to be my stock. I oversized stock like I just described. We're going to machine the top. So I, I think I'm thinking what they're thinking is. You would machine 25,000 saw off the top. And the other material would be like pre-machined. I don't know anybody that does it that way anymore. But Alright. We're going to need a vise. Yeah, we got a vise. All right, same vise we use in our school, and we use soft steel or aluminum soft jaws with a step, and they're cut already. We do a 200 by 200 step. 
so just in case you end up skimming this top here it's no harm no foul the tools not going to be ruined uh, if you cut too much off the parts going to go flying maybe the tool is still good and plus you can remachine these all day long you can keep on remachining the step keep on cutting it down you can reuse these a lot much better than with the parallels and the hard draws because you're gonna you eventually skim that thing which means you gotta ruin the tool and you got parallels that are falling down and springs and stuff like that this works a lot better in my opinion we are going to use, and I didn't put this in the example, is we need some kind of work stop. Some way of locating it. So think you're always thinking multiple parts. I know you're only making one, but uh, just in case, I'm going to put a work stop on this edge because our zero is right there, right? According to the part, print, print, zero, zero is that corner. So we're going to program the part, and so we go to set it up, we're going to, sorry for all the color stuff, we're going to probe this side, or edge find, I'm going to pro edge find this side right there, and we're going to shift it a little bit, so we, we got material cut on both sides, and enough that we can machine all the way around. So so you don't want to cut the bar too long and you don't, also don't want to cut it too short because if you shift this over you may not have enough on the other side. You're going to end up with a saw mark on the side. And we're going to have to shift the top coordinate down. So if you're using uh, the old school method which would be top of part with the paper method which I'm not a big fan of the paper method. I like using the dial block, two inch dial block or a one two three block or um, Either you're going to touch the tools off the top of the part, or you're going to probe the top of the part. You need to shift it down 10,000 somehow, however your instructor told you to do that. Uh, the edge finder probe, the same thing. You're just going to find and you're going to shift that coordinate in. I, I use 50-50, that which should be fine. I think that's adequate. Okay, let's just do a quick uh, demo here, right? I also made this so I can move the jaw. Yeah. That's not moving on me. Okay. All right, let me shut off that annoying uh, origin there. I mean, we're going to get to the nuts and bolts here. We're going to make something. Simulate. I'm going to turn on the stock and turn off the tool pin. And I'm going to get up and close and personal. Okay. Let's just slow her down and play. Got to skim the top with the big face mill. Gonna go around. Gonna cut the big rectangle. Gonna cut that island. Well, I'm doing it as a, and I'll show you why I did that first. So that's, this is kind of what we want to end up with, that. I'm going to change tools, and I'm, I'm, call, I'm doing something called ramp milling to rough out the middle of the slot, and then I'm going to go back in and contour cut that slot. So you're going to program this part using cut a comp. You're going to put in the uh, tool size in the compensation table, in the tool geometry table on your machine. And you're going to use all print dimensions on this. The easiest way to program G-code. Right. I'm pre-drilling all. I spot drilled all the holes with the 90 degree spot drill. I'm pre-drilling all those holes. And I'm going to follow up with the actual drill size. Because the drill will drill better. That'll be first side done. Deburr it, and I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom and mill that up. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, I'm going to move some operations around because I want to show you uh, something. Okay. Let's go step by step here. Oh, 
Okay.